inside our front overhead cabinet, we have all of our controls for our solar panel, our generator start and stop, our power management or EMS panel, our tank monitoring system and batteries, our inverter charge display, and our hot water heater for gas and electric. First one we're going to talk about is our solar display panel. And that's what it is. It displays our solar panel, what type of battery voltage we have, what type of uh, amperage we might have coming in from the sun, or how many amp hours we've accumulated over time. And we can do that by simply hitting the select button and selecting down through. So as we see here, I'm looking at battery voltage. The battery voltage is currently 12.2 to 12.3. So when I push that next one is solar charge amps. So if you're out in the sun and we're actually bringing in power from the sun, I would actually have an amp reading here. And in our systems here, we have a 100 watt solar panel on the roof. So at a potential peak power system or, or a sun in an upright position, we could see over five amps of power coming into the unit. The next one is actually amp hours that we've accumulated from the sun. As you can see, this unit here has accumulated 26.1 hours of power being brought in from the sun. Our next switch here is our generator start switch, or we can shut the generator off at this position. If we was to push and hold this button in the up position, our generator would start. If the generator hadn't been started in, in a couple months or a month, it may take a couple cycles of trying to start it. I would hold that button about 10 to 15 seconds and then release it and then try again. If the generator's running and I want to shut it off, I just simply push and hold in the down position or stop position and it'll shut off. The display here to the right is how many hours that generator has ran. So when you first purchase a unit, you're going to have a couple tenths of, a, you know, of an hour on that display. On your first oil change, once this is 20 hours, you're going to want to change the oil in that first 20 hours. That's the break-in um, oil. After that, you can go up to 150 hours before you change the oil and the filter, air filter, into that uh, unit. The next one we're going to go to is we're going to come back down here into the corner is our water heater. As we can see here, the one on the left with the lightning bolt is our 120 volt source for heat. In the up position, it will be on. On the right hand side here where the little flame indicator is, is for our LP gas. You'll have to have your 12 volt system on. So if I want to light the water heater, I just push in the up position and it'll light. Um, if it fails to light, it'll actually turn this indicator red on the gas portion. One of the biggest questions we get from our customers and or dealers is, can I run both heating sources at the same time? The answer is yes. As long as you have the 120 volt source and gas to the unit, you can heat the water with both of those heating sources. The recovery time is much quicker. The next switch we've got here is our Magnum Energy Control Switch for our 1000 watt Magnum Inverter, Pure Sign Inverter. So what we want to do is if we're driving down the highway and I want to watch TV, what I can do is turn my inverter on. My engine as I'm running down the road is sending voltage or 12 volts back to the unit. So I've got an endless supply of 12 volts of energy to convert to 120. All I need to do is simply push this button once to wake it up, push it again, and a green light appears here where I'm inverting. And now I've actually supplied power to my entertainment system. So my front TV, my rear TV, and my Blu-ray player. The only time I need that inverter on is if I'm watching TV um, without being plugged into shore power. Any other time, please shut your inverter off. The next display is our freshwater, gray water, and black water display along with our LP. So if I want to read my tank monitoring system, all I have to do is push in the up position, the tank test, and it'll actually show me the levels of the tank. As you can see here, my black water and gray water are empty, actually showing green, which is good. Think of green as good, okay? And my fresh tank and my LP are showing red, which is showing that they're empty, which is bad. The next one I have in here is a battery main and a battery auxiliary switch. 
In the up position is battery main, which is my engine battery. So I'm actually looking at my voltage for my engine to start. And in the down position is my house batteries, the power for my back of my van and for the lights and fans, etc. So what we're going to talk about today is the power management system or the EMS system. This controls all the 120 volt power inside the vehicle or the interstate. Um, if you're using too much power, it's going to automatically shut items off. And then once that power that attributed that shutdown goes away, that other item will come back on. And that is in our power management system that we have here. So once our unit is plugged in and has power source to it, the display will actually come on. As you can see here, we just have a power source come to it, and you can see this panel lights up. What's going to happen is once we're plugged in, we can select off of shore power what type of amperage we have coming into the system. So if you're at a campground, our typical power coming into it should be no less than 30 amps of power. As you can see here, I've got it selected at 30 amps. Now if we're at home and we're at a, our garage or what have you and we only have a 20 amp outlet or 20 amp circuit, I can manually select from this 30 over to the 20. And now I'm managing my load at 20 amps. This same thing is going to happen when I start my generator. What's going to happen when I start my generator, this will automatically switch up to gen and it's going to manage that load at 20. So once this number here increases up, say if my air conditioner comes on, it may be 16, 17 on that display, which is 16 or 17 amps, it's going to run perfectly. Now if I was to turn on another item such as a water heater or a microwave in that, that scenario, I add those numbers to that which would increase over 20 um, and it would shut it off. So if I was running my air conditioner and I would have a number here of 17, then what's going to happen when I turn my water heater on, that would increase to about a number of 29 and it would automatically shut that water heater off and allow my air conditioner to keep running, but it does shut that water heater off. The air conditioner is primary. Now the opposite of that, it happens if I start my microwave, my microwave will stay on, but it'll shut everything off above it from water heater, air conditioner, and the coffee circuit. The reason that is primary is because typically when you're cooking in a microwave, you may only be heating something up for 30 seconds to three minutes. So in that case, you're only going to lose your air conditioner for about four minutes. There's two minute intervals between the checks of the air conditioner being shed. So in four minutes, that is the second check, that air conditioner and all those circuits will come back on because the microwave shut off in three minutes. One of the questions we get here at Airstream is about boondocking or dry camping, basically off the grid. Um, the efficiency of the coach is all determined by how you use the vehicle. So one of the things that you always want to make sure is that you don't have ceiling lights on or fans on if you don't need them or if you're not using them or your inverter in the on position if you're not watching TV. Those items will actually drain your battery down quicker along with your LP gas. You've got electronic gas valve um, that holds your gas valve open um, so if you're not using any gas appliances, water heater, stove, or using your generator, there's no reason you would want that LP on. So you'd want to shut your LP gas valve off um, down at the fill station. 